Hey Faith World, thank you so much for tuning in to The Voice of Faith. As you hear this message, we want to build up your faith and build up your hope in the Word of God. Check out this message from Marquise. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to The Voice of Faith. Listen, the last time that I was with you, we started a conversation about why we should praise God. You might say, Marquise, that's very Sunday school-ish, but I'm telling you, man, a lot of people, if they're not careful, we can get away from it and drift. Life can come and happen and just, you know, totally push us away from what is priority. But we talked about some of the reasons why we should praise God. Number one, that the Word of God instructs us to, according to Psalm 150. We talked about praise being a vital part of a surrendered life to God and giving credit to where credit is due, according to Psalm 107 and 8. And we talked about, thirdly, that praise focuses our attention on God and it just causes us to blank out everything around us and keep our focus or should I say keep the main thing the main thing. Tonight I want to just share a few more principles with you um, as to why we should praise God and I would like to share with you tonight that praise will eradicate and drive away despair. If we could just categorize just this past year and a half, I think the world would really lean towards saying that this has been a year of despair. So many deaths and so many things going on around us that they would just just totally settle for, oh, we're in hopeless and utter despair. But that is not the case for the child of God. That is not the case for the believer. And when we give ourselves over to the praising and worshiping of God, it will drive that away. There's no better way uh, to beat the blues, as the world would sing, uh, than to change our focus from ourselves to God. I mean, as I said before, there's a lot of people singing the blues right now and so much focus is on oneself. Uh, but when you praise God, such a shift produces a change. And as Isaiah 61 and 3 tells us, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. He gives us, rather, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. And if you have studied anything about Jewish history, anytime um, they would be in a time of mourning, um, oil was a, um, it was a luxury in a sense. Um, it, it, moisturized their skin. Oil was often given to guests and visitors when they would come to homes because many of the geographical locations were very um, sandy and a lot of dirt. So they would give oil to just replenish themselves. But anytime the Jewish culture, they got it over into mourning or something catastrophic happened, they would refrain from putting oil on and instead they would put ashes upon themselves to really drive home the point that things are not well. But when things would change, they would stop mourning, they would take off the, um, the ash, and they would put on uh, oil to symbolize that things have shifted now, things are better. And this is what Isaiah is saying in chapter 61, that he gives us the oil of gladness for mourning. Listen, when you get over into praising God and taking the focus off of yourself and putting your focus on the greatness of who he is, there is an oil that comes upon us and refreshes us in this time. Another aspect that I want to share with you is that praise is not just what we do on Sunday mornings in the church, but praise is where God lives. And you might say, well, isn't God omnipresent? Yes, he's everywhere at the same time, but yet his presence is especially pronounced and intense during an atmosphere or in an atmosphere of praise. I'm sure you've gone to worship service services such as our own and you've walked in the building and you can just almost just feel the tangible presence of God. And this is scripture because Psalm 22 and three tells us that he inhabits the praises of his people. The scripture says that he is enthroned amongst the praises of his people. You can't praise God and not have God show up. Another principle that I want to share with you is that praise facilitates access to God. 
Yes, access to God. Now, obviously, it is the blood of Jesus that has paved the way for our forgiveness from sin and a relationship with God, according to Hebrews 10 and 19. But with that being said, our lifestyle, which is an ornament to our life, provides a clear passageway to him. How do I know that? Psalm 104 tells us, therefore, enter his gates not with complaining, not with murmuring, not focus on everything that's going wrong. But he says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. It goes on to say, be thankful unto him and bless his name. Now, let me give you a transparent moment. There's been times where I've had to fight the temptation to complain about things not going right or certain particular things not going my way. But I find that once I shift over into a spirit of thanksgiving and start really thanking God for what he's done in my life, I mean, it totally just dries up that complaining and murmuring spirit that tries to, to creep on me. And I begin thanking God for all the things that he's done for me. And it totally just lifts me to another place. Another one before I get off of here, praise will provoke a prophetic flow and cause you to hear what God is saying. Praise will provoke a prophetic flow. The Bible tells us in 2 Kings 3, 15 and 16, while the harpist was playing, the person playing the string instruments, the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he said, this is what the Lord says. I will fill this valley with pools of water. Listen, when you get over into praise, it provokes the prophetic and it causes God to speak. It causes you to hear his voice clearly. Listen, if ever was the time we needed to hear God's voice is now. Last but certainly not least, why do we praise God? Simply because he's worthy. He is worthy of praise. This last scripture I want to share with you, Revelation 4 and 11. Worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and because of you they were created. Listen, God is worthy to be praised. So let's make a commitment in this season that we're living in and the rest of our lives to give God praise. Keep the focus and the attention on him and watch your life change for the better. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of The Voice of Faith. We believe that God is going to do some amazing things in your life. And before you go, we always want to give you an opportunity to give so that you can be blessed. The different ways that you can give are on the screen. Also, if you need prayer, we would love to pray with you. Just email, message, or call the church. Thank you so much for watching today and have a blessed week.